What's up Conscious Creators, Alex here. There's a concept called radical acceptance that you might have heard of, and it's most often talked about as a practice, a skill, a tool, or a technique. However, I wanted to share with you how I learned in my own experience it's actually none of those things, and what true acceptance actually is. The purpose of this video is not to try and trash any tools, techniques, or practices from any kind of book or therapy that's currently helping anyone. It's to offer a different perspective. The purpose of this video is to share with you the discoveries that have helped me, so maybe they can help you too. The prevailing idea of radical acceptance is that you accept this moment exactly as it is. It's not that you become passive and never try to change a situation. And it's not that you have to approve of a situation or someone's bad behavior. It's that you let go of the inner resistance to the way life is and the notion that life shouldn't be this way. Because attachment to that notion just creates suffering. And to be truly effective in changing reality, acceptance must come first. We may be in a situation that we really don't like, a situation we want to physically escape, or we may even be experiencing great pain. But the inner rejection of reality and the resistance to it creates suffering on top of that pain. There may be a mental commentary over the top that says, this shouldn't be happening. This isn't fair. Why me? Why now? Which generates unnecessary suffering. And while this is true, I'm suggesting that true acceptance isn't a practice or a skill. So let's investigate this. Let's look at what's actually happening when you're not accepting, when you're resisting and rejecting life. When you're resisting, you're focused on thoughts in the mind, a mental commentary that says, life shouldn't be this way. And there's tensions and contractions in the body that go along with it. And the longer you spend focused on those thoughts, following them, believing in them, and therefore perpetuating them, the longer you perpetuate the suffering that goes along with them. If you were to withdraw attention from those thoughts and not identify with them, then you would simply be being. You would simply be resting as yourself without identifying with and believing in the unaccepting thoughts. Now, how much of a practice or a skill does it take to be yourself, considering that you already are yourself? In fact, is it not the case that you've been practicing the unaccepting thoughts? Could it be that acceptance is something that you stop doing, that you stop believing in and identifying with unaccepting thoughts? You drop the effort behind resisting, contracting, and identifying with thoughts that say, life shouldn't be this way, and you come back to rest as who you naturally already are. It's a lot of effort to stay unaccepting, resisting, thinking about how things apparently shouldn't be the way they are, and tensing up. It's energy draining. Is it not the case that real acceptance is the way of ease and allowing rather than the effort behind a skill or a practice. If you try to practice acceptance with the thinking mind, you're now thinking about acceptance, which just perpetuates more thinking. I would suggest that what you're really longing for is a life where thinking about accepting or resisting is no longer ruling your experience, and instead you rest naturally as who you truly are, naturally open allowing, without resistance, already accepting. You might be wondering, but how is who I truly am without resistance? How is who I truly am already accepting? Well, to discover the nature of who you truly are, you have to investigate it, right? You have to give attention to who you truly are to find out its nature. And it's not something that's done with the mind. It's not something that's done with thinking. Thinking is something you're aware of. Here, we're interested in the one who's aware. Here, we're interested in awareness itself. 
So I invite you to start to investigate this now. You have thoughts that arise in your awareness, correct? And then you have the awareness that those thoughts arise within, right? In fact, if you really investigate this, you find that everything you've ever experienced arises within awareness. Everything you've ever experienced arises within you. Everything you could ever experience arises within awareness. Everything you could ever experience arises within you. It's like there's this space in which everything unfolds. It's like there's this aware spaciousness that all your thoughts, feelings and sense perceptions appear and disappear within. It's a prevailing myth that your awareness appears in your brain or your body. Because if you actually investigate your experience, you find that everything appears and disappears in your awareness. And that awareness is who you essentially are. It's the only thing that's absolutely essential to you. If you were to remove all of your thoughts, feelings and sense perceptions, what would be left? Only awareness would remain. Only you would remain. So there's an invitation here to investigate the nature of awareness, to investigate the nature of who you essentially are, of this aware spaciousness. When you become aware of this spaciousness, you find it to already be accepting, to already be without resistance. You find the true acceptance isn't a practice, a skill, a tool or a technique, it's the nature of who you essentially are. Take the analogy of a movie playing on a screen. There's all kinds of things that could happen in the movie. There might be joyous moments, there might be undesirable events. There's a whole dance of form that plays out on the screen. But nothing that ever happens on the screen ever affects the screen. Even in the most intense movie. The screen remains undisturbed. The screen naturally allows and accepts everything that plays out on it. The screen is already without resistance. It's already accepting. Its nature is acceptance. Take the analogy of the space of a room. There's all kinds of things that could happen in the room. There might be joyous moments. There might be undesirable events. But nothing that ever happens in the room disturbs the space of the room. The space of the room remains undisturbed. It's already without resistance. Its nature is acceptance. So awareness is like the movie screen or the space of the room. When we see that we are this awareness and we rest as this awareness, as ourselves, we find ourselves to be naturally accepting and without resistance already. The unacceptance was identification with the sense of self in unaccepting thoughts. We confused ourselves with the sense of self in our thinking instead of remembering we're the one who's aware. So there's an invitation here. Whenever you find yourself resisting and rejecting life, whenever you find yourself caught up in thoughts about how things apparently shouldn't be this way, ask yourself, who's the one who's aware of these thoughts? Investigate. Are you the sense of self in the unaccepting thoughts? Or are you the aware spaciousness that the thoughts appear within? Investigate the nature of this awareness. Investigate the nature of yourself. This is the path to remembering who you truly are. Wide open, allowing, accepting, without resistance. Thoughts about accepting, Resisting or rejecting may appear within you, but you simply leave them alone and you rest as yourself. And as you rest as yourself, these thoughts will eventually subside and the corresponding tensions that go along with them will eventually dissolve, allowing you to rest in the peace of who you truly are and experience more flow. So that concludes the video. Before you go, here's some more details about my coaching program, the Consciousness Revolution program. On this program, we help you overcome anxiety or low self-esteem that's holding you back from peace and creating what you desire from a place of flow. If you want to overcome confidence blocks or live from a place of deeper peace and flow, this program is for you. 
or if you're a conscious entrepreneur that's had some momentum but has ran into some blocks and wants help taking things to the next level, this program is also for you. So head over to speaktoalex.com and book a time for us to chat about solving your challenges. And with that being said, like this video if you liked it. And of course, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any new videos helping you with conscious personal growth.